the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus be with all of you. And with your spirit. As we come before the all-holy God, we know we're not as holy as we could be. We don't blame anybody else. We turn the finger and the fist on ourselves, acknowledging before God and each other that we are sinners. And so we pray together. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us bow our heads in prayer.
Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Six days you may labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. No work may be done that by either you or your son or daughter or your male or female servant or your beast or by the alien who lives with you. In six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, but on the seventh day he rested. That is why the Lord has blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and mother that you may have a long life in the land which the Lord, your God, is giving you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not cover your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male or female slave, nor his ox or ass, nor anything that belongs to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Christian community at Corinth, there were divisions. They were constantly saying what they believed, how they saw things. And even though the Jews had converted to Christianity, and the Greeks and Gentiles had converted to Christianity, they each saw it from their own perspective. Paul dares to bring them together by what was going to be a stumbling block for both sides. What Paul says we preach is very different. Check out what it is. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but to those who are called Jews and Greeks alike, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. <laughs> the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jews answered and said to him, 
What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered, and he said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. And then the Jews said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. While he was in Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover, many began to believe in his name when they saw the signs that he was doing. But Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all and did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it very well. The Gospel of the Lord, let us give thanks and
So the initial anger just seethed in me. Anger is a very common human emotion. One of the things the Gospel writer John says, Jesus understood about humanity. We get angry. But anger can be dangerous. We know what road rage can do. We know where it can lead at times, when it overtakes us. So part of being in touch with our God is to understand our human nature as Jesus does. And then allow it to be transformed. That's why when we see Jesus getting angry, there's a part of us that says, whoa, he's got a problem. No, Jesus is human. But the Gospel writer makes a very significant difference of how he describes Jesus' reaction. He made reference to his anger was against the temple, the human place of worship, and his outrage turning over had nothing to do with the objects themselves, it had to do with how people were misusing that and forgetting what their ultimate purpose was. Jesus was in touch with human anger and he understood the human condition. But in John's Gospel, you always have to pay attention to the significant word changes. Jesus is calling us to a different way of behaving in my Father's house. In John's Gospel, it soars. It takes us beyond the temple of our human condition and invites us to enter in to the Father's house. What we sang in the psalm is true. Your words are spirit and life. They're words of our human nature, but they are filled, transformed, leading us upward, soaring like the eagle to spirit and life, the spirit and life that belongs to God. It's very easy for us, as I was feeling, it was not easy to let go of that little simple anger that just kind of built because things didn't work the way I wanted them to work when somebody pulled a fast one on me. But the invitation during Lent is we're not about our business. It's about what God is doing. And the invitation of God is to make sure that that human emotion of anger that gets us all riled up, bound and determined with energy, the psalmist uses zeal for your house, the Father's house, consumes me. It is an energy that is meant to be directed to accomplishing good. But how often does our anger go to the little things? Why don't you do this? How come you always... Those are the things we get upset with in relationship to each other. Oh, that drives me crazy when she does that. That's not zeal for the Father's house. That isn't what God is calling us to use that energy for. If we see how those coming from Mexico are treated at the border, and we say, oh, that's too bad. That's too bad they were separated from their families. That's too bad their condition is not good. 
And there isn't an anger in us. There isn't an energy to say that that is unjust. That that is not what the Father's house is about. It is a house that welcomes everybody and makes sure that everyone is well taken care of. We have seen in the capital episode what anger does when one side disagrees with another side. Are we channeling that anger though to make sure that those who we elect are representing the values of the Father's house should be what our legislative houses are about. If we are the ones that are walking in the ways of Jesus, who have been claimed and chosen by God to accomplish good things. Brandon is our Catechumen, and when I asked him this past Sunday what his experience was at the right of election, he was taken by the building. He said, well, it didn't look like much from the outside, referring to the cathedral. But then he said, when I went inside, it was awesome. The Father's house leads us to an experience of all of life as awesome. When our planet is mistreated, if that doesn't anger us, if that doesn't energize us to make sure that something is done, we can't sit back and just let it go. Because all of creation is in the Father's house. God created it good and entrusted us to keep it good. The moment of grace is the invitation to make sure that the anger and frustration of our lives is directed to greater good. That's what's in the Father's house. This past week, Mary Sue, our Director of Christian Formation, shared a music that she shared with the families. She was describing driving into Chicago during a snowstorm recently. The snow was coming down, the roads were icy. She was going slowly. And then she notices a pickup truck right on her bumper. And again, she's going like, what's your problem? But Mary Sue, with a big heart, decides maybe the best thing to do if he's got to get going is to pull over. So she finds a safe place to pull over and then is stunned to see that the pickup truck is pulling over right next to her. And now she's thinking, maybe he's in need. She rolls down her window. He rolls down his window and he starts yelling at her with inappropriate language for sure. And she, again, true to her nature, responds, the roads are not safe. I'm sorry, I'm going slowly. Please take care of yourself. If you want to go ahead, go ahead. And then there's a moment of silence. And he says, I'm sorry, I just lost my job. And her response was, do you have somebody to talk to? And he said, yes, I'm on the way to her house now. And she said, please, be careful. Go first. You are important. He didn't go forward. He got out of his car and brushed her windows that were filled with snow, cleared the car for her, and told her to go first. They waved. They moved on. The Father's house 
on the expressway. What a difference when our words are spirit and life. It can change human hearts. Let the church say amen. 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 For the church, that we may grow in awareness of our dignity as temples of the Holy Spirit, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace of renewal, that God's covenant with us will move our hearts to a deeper relationship with God and greater service to our neighbors, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the spirit of integrity, that we recognize ourselves as servants of God, honoring God's name by our words and deeds, and never attempt to use God for our own benefit. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For cleansing of the temple of our hearts, that God will free us from all that enslaves us and helps us to offer our self-sacrificing service to God and others. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the elect and candidates 
on their Lenten journey with us. That God will cleanse their hearts, lead them into fuller faith, and deepen their desire to be with us at the table of the Lord. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are ill, that God will relieve their pain, restore their health, and protect the human family from the further spread of the COVID virus. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Kevin Kennan, Butch Krug, Nathan Hallahan, Steve Sobieski, Connie Krieger, Donald Casper, and Paul and Joe Coppersmith. May they rest together on the mountain of God. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers held in the silence of our hearts. And for all the prayers written in this book of intentions and in the book at St. Joan of Arc, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, drive all that is evil from our hearts and allow your spirit to make us like you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As we are seated, I remind you again the online giving, sending in your envelopes, a constant way to make it clear that the values of God are the most important. And in sharing our abundance, God's goodness triumphs. Sign. 
signs of spring among us, it gives hope. Nature is blooming and so as we're getting closer and closer to the fullness of this time of being with God, may we begin to feel the growth, hearing the voice, knowing the closeness of God and the care that we receive from others. For these blessings, we give thanks. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit.
Let us bow before God. The mystery of the
Behold the Lord Jesus Christ, the one crucified, who by his death saved us from sin. Blessed are they who are invited to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my memory, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. I invite you to close your eyes for a moment and in the silence of your heart offer your personal thanks and praise of God who is willing to do everything to help us. How blessed we are. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven, and are nourished while still here on earth with the body and the blood of your Son Jesus, we humbly entreat you, Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to bow your heads and ask for God's blessing. Lord, direct the hearts of your faithful, and in your kindness, give them your saving grace. Let the church say, Amen. Amen.
Gracious God, bless your people with the endurance to remain in love of you and love of neighbor. Let the church say, Amen. 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 Gracious God, bless your people this day and always with the energy and the zeal to fulfill all your commands. Let the church say, Amen. 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 God bless all of you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we take our leave, the cross will lead us. That's what Paul said, Christ crucified. That's the stumbling block. A Savior that had to suffer. That the way to glory is to forget self and worry more about others. It's not an easy cross to bear. With eyes fixed on the cross as we take our leave, may God grant us the strength to do our own, following his ways, taking up our cross. Let us go to love and serve the Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you.